repeat it. Or you teach a child to say, how are you? And the child will still struggle. Or you give the child a book to read and his peers are reading it, but unfortunately he cannot read it. There is a special condition that this child is battling with. But how do we train such children so that they can have a normal brain like everybody else or they can study just like everybody else? Now, this condition is something that in our part of the world, Africa, we don't put a highlight on. And so I'm excited that we are going to talk about this very condition and how best we can help salvage it and solve it and let parents smile again. I have my guest seated here, of course, our very own Godafu, who is a memory trainer. He's a lecturer as well, and he is an author to a book that is helping millions out there. Good morning, Godafu. Good morning, Rosie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank Thank you. Doing fantastic this morning, I must say. Yeah. And I'm excited about this conversation. Though. That's good. Thank I'm excited you. too that there is going to be a conference on it and uh, it's going to help people because you can only imagine the kind of trauma some parents have to go through just because the awards cannot read nor write as quick as other children can. I have an ambassador here as well, and she's in the person of Ama Asamoah. She's a dyslexia ambassador and also the co-founder for Patron. Good morning, Ama. Good morning. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm Great. so happy to be here with it's you. It's good to have you here. Yes. So let's talk about dyslexia. For those who don't know what it really is, mm -hmm. please break it down for us as an ambassador to it. Great. So dyslexia in just common language is just a reading and writing comprehension. Um, it doesn't mean that you have mental disabilities. It just means you struggle and you need a little more attention when it comes specifically to reading and writing. Mm. Now, God, you have actually had, uh, you know, some research into these things. Is there something that causes such people to have that condition? Uh, yes, um, there's a cause. But if you go into neuroscience, they have not actually identify the real cause. Mm. So you, the commentaries are different. Some people are saying that um, in the language processing unit, the rhythm in there, if you pick, do the brain scan of a dyslexic person, it's too fast, you know. So if they could find a way to slow it down a little bit, help oh, cor right. correct it, you know. So the, the, the cause is not too specific. You know, but improvement, that is guaranteed. You can improve. You can work your way out of it, you know. And we have different forms of dyslexia. Mm. Dyslexia came from the word dis and lexis, Greek word. This okay. means difficult. Mm -hmm. Lexis is a Greek word which means it's tied to word. That's how it comes lexicon, dictionary, mm. you know. So we tie to reading. So difficult. Reading. Reading, you know, that's dyslexia. But could it, but, could it be that it's um, a genetic condition? Yeah, so I was coming to that, yeah. you know. And usually when it, it has to do reading, it might affect your spelling, you know, comprehension. So we have various forms of dyslexia, different types as well. Okay. So we, we've got primary dyslexia. Primary, that is more genetic, okay. you know. So your mom was dyslexic, you got it, mm -hmm. through her, her, hereditary. You know, so that's more familial, you know, through genes. The secondary... Why not father? Why mother? Oh, it could be father. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, father. So genes... Give that clarification. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to be sexist here. Yes, yeah, so it could be your father, you know. So run, it runs through the family, so you could get it. But I also talk about the fact that genes are not destiny. Mm. You know, the latest research in epigenetics suggests that we are not doomed by our genes. Right. Latest re research in neuroplasticity suggests that we are not hardwired mm -hmm. to remain in certain ways. So what it means is if you want to improve, you want to change your condition, okay. it's possible. You know. Then we have, we have secondary dyslexia, which is more of, of, of brain development during pregnancy. Okay. You know. And usually with that one, it, it could diminish over time. Then we have trauma dyslexia through accident. So when you get injured and the language part of the brain, it's affected, mm -hmm. that could also cause that. Right. You know, so 
uh, there's, there's good news, you know. You can improve. And we talked about neuroplasticity mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Your brain is plastic. You know, you can rewire your brain to improve all the time through the things you do. Mm. That is why we've started to promote it. Wow. You know, raise more awareness. Because looking at this and going back, thinking, mm -hmm. reflecting, we had some friends back in GHS. Back in primary school. Primary school. We saw them to be very dumb. Yep. Now I'm thinking, chances are that they were dyslexic. Yep. But did we give them help? No. no. We laughed at them, you know. And reflecting, um, I think I had some issues with regards to that. Because when I was young, my daddy asked me to spell egg. Mm. I couldn't spell it. And he beat it out of me. Mm. I had to practice E-G-G-Egg. E-G-G. -E -G -G. <laughs> I was crying for E-G-G-Egg. -E -G yeah. E-G-G-Egg. -E -G -E but this, I got it. This is what a lot of children are going through. And the thing is, we don't know that they even have the condition. What are some of the things that one can do to help improve it? To one thing for parents is more so you have to know your, your child better than their teacher. I think a lot of times parents kind of leave it just to the educators, but a, they're in a room with, what, 20, 30 other students, mm. right? You have to know your child and know um, what they're good and what they're not good at. And that first awareness is where advocacy starts. As a parent, if you can advocate for your child, you can help them improve. Mm. As an educator, if you can advocate for your student, you can help them improve. It was actually an educator that advocated for me. It was an educator who had um, a child that was special needs that saw um, that, hey, I think you might be dyslexic. By this time, I was diagnosed as an adult. Oh, wow. So by this time, I had already how, gone How old were you? I was 25. I was getting my MBA. I had already done the first thing. I got my graduates. I have a bachelor's of science in public health. And I'm getting my MBA. And this is the first time that I'm ever hearing the word dyslexic. Wow. And it completely shifted my world. Um, but luckily, I got my MBA in London. Mm -hmm. And London has a very robust system where it supports educational needs for yeah. students. So mm -hmm. I got the assessment. I went through all the proper channels and steps. And I found out that I had dyslexia. But I remember the first time where she said, I think you might be dyslexic. I almost felt as though she insulted me. Like, how dare you, mm. you know, call me dyslexic? And I remember walking away from that conversation thinking, I can let my pride stand in the way and not get the answers that I need. Or I can try something new. And if I'm dyslexic, my whole life will make so much more sense. And I decided, I'm like, I'm not going to let pride stand in the way of getting answers. And the, resource, the resources were there for me. Right? So it was just about me going on the journey mm -hmm. to get the answers. And when I finally got my assessment back, it was almost a weight that had been lifted off my shoulders. Because I knew like, I knew there was something, but I didn't have the word for it. And it was the first time that I was actually empowered. Like, ah, so okay. You, so even though you were doing your MBA, you were mm -hmm. struggling with reading. So I had developed, I did very well in education. Okay. Right? So education wasn't really my struggle. Mm -hmm. However, I had always struggled with reading and writing. Okay. But education system is much more robust. So I get, I geared more towards the life sciences. Okay. Because for me, that's more of a formula. You plug and play, you can get your answer. Um, so I shied away from reading and writing for so long, and I just developed my own coping mechanisms just to get through the papers. I used to hate writing papers. I remember taking this one test, mm -hmm. and that test, you had to write an essay at the end, and the essay, I believe, was 10 points. And I knew that I would struggle with the essay, so I did my best to make sure that every multiple question was right, because I knew the highest I could get was a 90, because I wasn't going to do the essay. I knew I didn't have the time nor that energy to put towards that essay, but during that time, I couldn't tell you why I knew that I wasn't going to succeed at the essay, and I should just study so I can get the multiple choice right. And lo and behold, I, I think I, I did, I wrote a little part of the essay, I got some points, but the highest score that I could have gotten was in the high 90s, which I did get. I didn't get 100% because I struggled with that essay. But back then, I didn't have the verbiage for it. But it's because mm. I'm dyslexic. Mm. Wow. Now, this particular condition, uh, you know, I, are you born with it or you can get it midlife? Maybe you get into your teens and then it just happens. Or maybe you are, you know, in your 20s or 40s and then it just starts. I think as my colleague um, said, it's, there's just diff different factors. Mm. But when we're talking about, like, dyslexia, A, you're born with it. You're born right? with it. So yeah. most, of, most of what we talk about in Africa Dyslexia Associates, 
association are students that are born with dyslexia. Okay. There are life events, you know, trauma events that happen that can cause dyslexia, mm -hmm. but we're talking about children that and, are born, that are with, born it. with it, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's inherited, so when I looked at my family, I'm the first one in my family to ever get an assessment. Okay. But when I look, I can see how people shy away from, from the writing. They're mm -hmm. like, that email's too long, I don't want to read it, right? So I see those little conditions where I'm like, if we all have proper assessments, there's probably a thread through here that shows that we're all a little bit dyslexic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but because I'm the first one in my family to actually get an assessment, I have the words, I have the verbiage, I have the assessment that backs up, okay, this is what I need in order to show up to be more successful in my educational and professional journey. That's great. Uh, let me come to you, Godafol. You know, uh, we have large classes in Ghana, a class of 32, 28. If a child is dyslexic, how are you going to help such a child? See, that's, that's the problem, <clears throat> you know. Um, elsewhere, what they do is um, they keep smaller class sizes, you know, and um, if they... they find out that you are dyslexic, they pull you out and they give you extra attention. You know, they pay more attention to you. And they, the, the, the teaching method also, it's, it's more varied, you know. I mean, they use different, more diverse. So they use more of something called multi-sensory approach. Somebody, we have different forms of, different types of learners. You could have visual learners auditory, kinesthetic, kinesthetic, they love to touch things. Visual, when they see, they understand more. Um, auditory, when they hear, they learn through hearing better than the other um, ways. So you could mix them, you know. So in class, don't, don't just think, you know, I've got people who, um, if I talk, they will get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got people who might get it just through reading on their own or just saying it. Um, so you need to identify all these different types of learners and bring in d different forms of, you know, teaching methods to help everybody, you know. So you might do more of demonstration, discussions. Let me bring you this research. Mm -hmm. it, it says that from Edgar Coe, Edgar, um, Edgar Coe, yeah, he, he did something called uh, the Cone's, Cone's Cone. If you listen to a lecture, after two weeks, you are likely to remember 5%. The rest gone. Mm. If you read on your own, after two weeks, you're likely to remember 10%. If you see audiovisual and hear, you're likely to remember 20% after two weeks. Wow. You know, 30%, you're likely to remember when you do discussions. Mm. You know, so when they, we discuss, we meet and we discuss. Yeah. But when we demonstrate, demonstration, likely to remember more, 50%, you know. And when you do yourself, so when I come to class and demonstrate it, remember how I demonstrate mm -hmm, the brain? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many people keep calling me, they understand it now. So when I demonstrate for you to see, you're likely to remember a lot. Right. But when I make you do it yourself, you're likely to remember 75% to two weeks. You know, but when you teach it to somebody, 90%. So we could bring in all these things to help them remember. Right. You know, so we, we, we demonstrate, we make them have discussion, interactions, and all that. And again, you still need to be super vigilant. Mm -hmm. If they still need help, you pull them out. You give them that attention, you know. And for me, it's, it's, in America, there's, a, there's an act, IDEA -D -E mm -hmm. Act, or IDEA Act 204. Is they are right. So uh, in, in a guy, that's quite funny, he, he cheated. When he went to UK, he said, I'm dyslexic. Mm. So when you are dyslexic, we give you more attention. Right. You know? So if we are giving everybody two hours to finish their paper, we may give you more. Mm -hmm. you know? But he was cheating, he was lying. You know? So he had some other you know, documents to support it, but he faked it. So every time the scores were high, because we were using two hours, mm -hmm. we give him three hours. We take it, his time to do to all do that, it. you know. So they give you the attention. Right. And I'm thinking in Ghana, we need to do the same. We need to start. We need to give that. them special mm -hmm. attention. Let's talk about uh, the event that is happening, and I'm excited about it. So when is it happening, Amma? It is next Monday. Okay. 
from 9 to 3, mm -hmm. and I would love if you guys can come join us. Um, there's tickets still available, am I correct? Yeah. Yes, there's tickets still available. There is going to be educators. Um, I'm a moderator on the panel, Godwin. Mm -hmm. We're on the same panel yeah. together. Yeah. So we're going to be talking to parents. We're going to be talking to creatives, um, artists, musicians that are actually dyslexic. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be talking to some of the decision makers in Ghana that can actually help implement this in our educational system. So it's going to be a platform for not just information, but resources, but also um, what we're hoping to do is not just to feed the audience with information, but to actually make change at a fundamental level. That's great. So some of the speakers we have are... Yeah, my, myself. Myself, yes. I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Rosalind as well. Yeah. I'm coming through, not you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the founder. <laughs> the founder. I would love to have you around, though. Yeah, let's see, you let's have, see what you we have, can you do. have a big brain as well. Yeah, so <laughs> love to have you around. Um, Deputy Minister is also. Right. Ochame Kwame. Yes. You know yes. he's dyslexic as well. Oh, is it? And yeah. did I tell you these people, if you are dyslexic, you also have a sh strength. In some areas, it's something else. So they, they are strong. They could have, they'll be strong. They could be strong in sports, mm. music. That's like yeah. Kwame, good that rapper. Talent. Yeah, you know, yeah. But he's doing well now. Yeah. yeah, he's doing very well with reading and spelling. You know, there's another rev, Reverend John. He's okay. the CEO of Tough College. Okay. You know, he's coming through as well. He's also dyslexic, but when he speaks, you love to hear him. That's great. He's a great speaker. You That's know, so great. it's something that could be treated. And um, it's, it could be managed, mm. you know. So it's happening on Monday. What Monday. time? We we'll start at 9, 9, 9, 9 to 3. 9 3 to 3. That's yeah. great. But it's and not it's free. strictly yeah. by invitation, though. Yeah, but you need to register. It's, okay. It's you free need to for everybody. It's yeah. free, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's free. Okay. Right. So you can be there because it's free. Uh, if the, you want to contact a number, the number is 0241843287. 0241843287. So you can register and be a part of it. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Super Thank great. You. Uh, it's been amazing. And it's actually us to draw more light on such conditions is a pleasure for us to do that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Be you. Be grateful. Mm -hmm. so I'll be having a conversation with God Afo, who is an author, and he's a memory trainer as well. So if you have any condition with regards to your memory or your brain, the person to call on is God Afo, and also Ama Asamoa, who is a co-founder for Patron and also Dyslexia ambassador thank you so much for being here super grateful we'll take a quick break on that note now uh over the weekend should i say last weekend yes we heard uh, you know uh, in the spiritual realm where the anointing took over a man of god nathaniel Bassi, as he was ministering right here in ghana now he said that he sees that the ghanian musicians gospel musicians are taking over the world in the next three years however he was urging the songwriters and producers to write most of their songs in English. It has caused a lot of controversy on social media and on all digital platforms. People are talking about it. Some are praising him, others are bashing him. This is the next conversation, and KMJ is going to pilot that particular conversation. Do stay glued to your television set. My name is Rosalind Feli. We'll be right back. Christmas is here again with us and Volta Serene Hotel Ho offers you the very best, the most fun field and most relaxing Christmas ever. Dab the Serene Christmas from 23rd of December 2023 through to the 1st of January 2024. Oh yes, if you want to celebrate Christmas in a luxurious four-star hotel that you can actually call home in the most serene environment, then Volta Serene Hotel offers you just that. All reservations come with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
It taught the mountain of Faja and the Wuri waterfalls on 24th of December 2023. Our hiking, bonfire, nightclub and musical entertainment sessions will leave you totally elated. We are poised to make your weekend a fun and a relaxing one. Hey, Pumpkins, you are not left out, as our entertainment game house will be very, very active to host both young and old throughout the stay. Why don't you call us for inquiries and reservations? Make your Christmas a very serene one at the Volta Serene Hotel. Volta Serene Hotel. Feel the serene touch. As a professional chef, when I am selecting smoked fish for any recipe, I look for high quality and safe fish. Fish processed in certified processing facilities and packaged in food grade materials. Quality smoked fish smells good and appears firm and attractive. Healthy eating is a key goal for all chefs and food enthusiasts. And when it comes to providing safe fish meals, these and many more factors are some